when I was a kid, I like fully believed that skiing was invented in Vermont. <laughs> like fully believed that. You could argue that a form of skiing began in Vermont. There's basically no straight line on any road in Vermont. Windy roads to these small towns, it's such a journey. And then when you're with Jimmy Ryan, it becomes an adventure. Jim, this definitely feels like not a thoroughfare to anywhere. Ah, uh, but it might be. And then it becomes a process. We haven't seen another car in 15 minutes. Also not a bad sign. That's just kind of how it is. Kaylin, you should know that Vermont ski dudes can't be trusted. My intuition says we're somewhere in this region. Does it say anything about Tom's flapjacks on there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe check your phone then. Okay. Still no service. Oh. I'm here with a local. You should know where we are. Kaylin, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know where we are. You need know. to know landmarks. I, don't know. I, don't I always know. tell the cameraman what Yogi Berra once said. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Oh, we got company, Fred. Wonder who's coming along here this time of day. Uh, we're pretty lost. Could you guys maybe help us out? Where are you headed? We're looking for Killington. Kilton? Kilton. You want me to go to uh, Kilton? Killington? You can't get there from here. What's up there? The, the Women's World Cup. World Cup? The big event? Never heard of it. Can I bring the map out and you can show us where we are? Yeah, we'll, we'll give it a try. All these roads, they're gorgeous, but they just whine forever. So, you guys are like way over here now, quite a ways out. Could over you... where? Over where? Way over here, by, oh. Ga by Gaysville. Oh, man. Well, remember that road where you come down around by the Ottaquichi? No. You don't. Well, you go across the Ottaquichi, and right on the edge here, there's a big, huge rock with a limb hanging out over it. OK. You remember that? Nope. No. Oh. Well, anyway, the little dirt road, you're going to follow that along the river. Okay. And then there's, uh, what's the name of that road there? Loose? Loose Cow Lane. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Don't go that way. Doesn't work. Sorry. He knows. So then you go back on Route 4, and you're going to continue on that over through uh, Woodstock, and there'll be a sign there that says Kilt, and you're on your way. If all else fails, what's the one piece of advice you can give us to get to Killington? If you see a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know where we are, but I know that's the Ataquichi. Ocho, Ocho, Achawuchi. Ataquichi. Ataquichi. Yeah. They were quite a couple. Cute young couple. Those Flatlanders, I tell you, they don't know what they're getting into when they come to Vermont. Mm. Dumber than a box of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are other people looking for the World Cup. We should gather them together. So we can all be lost together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, I've never gone through this bridge before. <gasps> really? Never ever, yeah. I feel like we're on a photo safari, but we're not. We're actually trying to get to some place, but I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, but take some pics, maybe. I'm like 20% annoyed with you for not knowing where we're going, and 80% pretty charmed, because that 20% is growing, though, so <laughs> let's get moving. Yeah. If we miss it next year, it'll be good, too. Don't even joke. <laughs> if I do not get to the World Cup, I'm, I'm going to be so pissed. It's Woodstock. All right, that's clearly on the map. Yeah, that's on the way to something. They're on the way to something, all right. This is Killington, Vermont, the beast of the east. And if it's November, that means World Cup. reputation exceeds itself. I've heard such great things. 30,000 people celebrating every single racer across the finish line. And I wanted to see that with my own eyes. The World Cup has been established all over the world for a really long time, but now some of the very best athletes in the world, and they're coming here to Killington, and it feels good to be part of something like that. And you're all freezing your ass off, too. <laughs> I 
Always happy to be back. A lot of love for this place and the people in it. Every time I drive any road here, I'm reminded of how beautiful Vermont is. But no matter what turn you take, you're gonna end up somewhere. And everybody that lives in Vermont loves it. Also, the sandwiches here are just better. That's a thing, that's a thing. Sandwiches are better in Vermont. Jimmy Ryan and Kaylin Richardson both grew up in the gates. And with all the World Cup energy in the air, they weren't gonna miss a chance to lay down a few arcs of their own. It's really nice to be home and, and ski a run. I've skied a thousand times before. There were a couple turns that Jimmy and I shared at Killington where I looked at him and I said, those are some of the most fun turns I've ever had. I don't have red and blue gates telling me where to go. Killington is this left, right, center, wherever I want. Jimmy has this beautiful touch on the snow. Powerful, yet he makes it effortless. Standing at the bottom, hearing over 30,000 people cheering for ski racing. It made me miss it a little bit. We'll be back for the race. But first, back at Killington, race day approaches. It takes lots of snow to host a World Cup. And in November? Doesn't scare these guys. Making snow for the World Cup is a passion. It's the first World Cup race every season. The Killington snowmakers take great satisfaction and pride in their work. They know what it means because they all ski and ride here. Snowmaking in the ski industry in general is an absolute necessity because if you can't count on Mother Nature, you got to make it yourself or you're not skiing. Snowmaking? East Coast Pow, you mean? <laughs> so much work had to go into hosting a World Cup. I mean, the amount of snowmaking and the venue, and year after year, they've been able to pull it off. Being a skier in Vermont just means that you're having a good time. I think that's as hardcore as you need to be here. Sharon's a great example of that. It doesn't matter the conditions. It doesn't matter what it's doing outside. Sharon wakes up in the morning, she drops her little girl to school, and then she goes to the mountain. The East's biggest mountain, that is, and the one with the longest season. If Sharon Mitchell wants to make Killington's famous 100-day club, she has more than 200 days to do it. About five years ago, I realized I really liked skiing alone. When you're out there early, no one's around. You get your own line. It's definitely a soulful moment a moment where I really clear my head of anything. It can be a busy world if you don't take the time for yourself to, to get away. Should I talk about how much I love Alpre skiing? I'm just joking. I grew up skiing with my mom, but the day she let me go, I always tell her it was the best day of my life. <laughs> and I learned so much from the mistakes I made, and I learned about, you know, oh, oh my gosh, it's my kid. How are we gonna kiss like we do? This is um, my daughter's first year going to pre-K, so 
It's really nice to drop her off on a day that I know I'm gonna get out and ski, and most of the days I do. I love having the free time, don't judge me. But it makes me a better mom, you know? I feel like it does. What to do, okay? More happy. We're gonna open the door. Yeah, okay. I've worked in restaurants long enough that people would be like, is this it? You know, tell me you're gonna do something else. Tell me there's like, you have some kind of dream career. And I'm like, no, this is it. I'm like, do you know what I did all day? I had so much fun before I got here. I've brought my daughter to every single World Cup. She's like, we won, we won, the girls won. She loves it. five years ago, I would have said, but you know, I don't get nervous. I really didn't think about expectations. I didn't care about what anybody else was saying. I just tried to ski my absolute best and my fastest every race, and a lot of races that paid off really well. I've been learning and growing through this whole process, battled some nerves. You can have a bad day, but you gotta pick yourself back up and get out there and go again. Preparing, working hard, being determined, and skiing with inspiration. It's an incredible sport, and the adrenaline you get from racing down an icy mountain as fast as you can, and going through the finish and seeing that your very best was good enough to be the best, that's, that's unlike any other feeling. When I was a little girl, and I was like, I want to be the best ski racer in the world. I saw some of my favorite athletes winning the overall globe, and people saying, that's the best ski racer in the world. So I was like, I want that. <laughs> Michaela Schiffer! Killington makes the risky prospect of hosting a World Cup look easy, but it's had a little help from the U.S. team's brightest star. Things quiet down when Michaela leaves town, but not for long. Because this is the beast, and the season's just begun. People ask me to describe skiing, and I have to kind of go back to what Warren said, because he put it best. What it really boils down to is having fun. Killington was where I fell in love with skiing, where I learned how much fun it can be. And in a way, I kind of learned who I was on Killington. Yeah, Vermont's home for me. It'll always have a piece of my heart, a really big piece of my heart. 
This place raised me. My name is Sharon Mitchell. I live in Killington, Vermont. My name is Jim Ryan from Rutland, Vermont. I grew up skiing at Killington. I'm Kaylin Richardson here in Killington, Vermont, unlike anywhere else in the US. My name is Greg Hiltz. I've been here since 1977 making snow. Won't they be chuckling when they find out that they could have taken old turnpike road? Yeah, that's just like right around the corner. Just right around the there? corner and 